Hello and welcome to Bong Table. I'm Mass and this is another Conquest Panel Report. I am playing Back to Magma into City States. Ta da! Alright, let's go to the list. So, here's Back to Magma and we got a Warlord Tempered Sorcerer riding a Hellbird Drake with Fireforge and Hold Bluste with Herald of Magma. We then got another Tempered Sorcerer with Fireforge riding a Hellbringer Drake in Magma. So they can bounce spells off each other, you know, Warlords wants to throw that at a Hindering, and then the other, and then his second spell, he wants a Pyro Class, and this guy wants to activate the Pyro Class. So you kind of just do it in that order and, you know, get your Pyro Class out, screw some people over. You got like a 16-inch Death Bubble around each Drake. Even if you're using the non-Warlord Tempered Sorcerer to drop that Hindering Terrain and then using the Warlord's Pyro Class and then casting another spell elsewhere, like Hindering behind you. To generate tokens, it still work. It still gets stuff done. It's still good. Then we got an Argent Killa, great spellcaster, great guy to generate tokens. Get a little bit of scoring on your lights. Love him to death. He's running two MSUs of Flame Berserks and then two MSUs of Warden. So we got some good shooting in the list with the Hellbringer Drakes, Fireforge, and Hold Bliss Day. That's what five shooting regiments, and then we got the two Wizards for another two, so seven. So we get seven guns. While we have four melee guys who can kind of support themselves. Form up the castle walls to keep our drake safe and the rest of our shooting. And hopefully we'll spend those tokens on those guys so that they can reduce impacts and damage coming into them while dishing damage out. The Flame Berserks and the Wardens have some really good survivability. Defense 3 is not bad, but the big thing that kind of kicks off for both of them is that they have a higher resolve than a lot of things. Like, Flame Berserks being resolved 5 and the Wardens being resolved 4 with Fearless helps out a lot. The Argent Kilo is going to be sitting in a Warden block, so he's going to be coming on turn 2 or 3, depending on how well my reinforcement rolls go. And he will bump up the resolve of the Wardens to 5 when there's 4 of them, so if I don't lose a stand, they'll be good. Um, overall, I like the list, it's pretty good. You just kind of castle up behind a whole Balliste and then kind of flank with your Flame Berserks to cover the sides of the Drakes. And then as your Fire Forge come forward, the Flame Berserks move forward fight and die, and the Fire Force take their place defending the flanks. Tends to be what happens. Or you have Wardens follow up depending on what's going on if you need a more melee focused regiment to help and defend your castle. But you kind of focus your list around the Drakes. So I'm going to slow roll the rules, pause the video at any time to read anything. If you have any questions, I don't know, drop a comment, drop a like, drop a subscribe, all that stuff. And yeah, let's go on to the city states. Here's my opponent's city states list. It's called T. I have no idea what that means, but T. We have a mechanist with the standard of last orientation. This is actually a really good relic. It's pretty expensive. If, I believe 55 points off the top of my head. It's 50 or 55, one of the two. But it gives plus two seizing stands to your command stand, and if the regiment dies on an objective, you get to seize it for that turn. My opponent's putting his Mechanist into a unit of Thorakides, what I believe are lights, yeah, there they are. There's four of them, with the Minotaur Thyrion, so that makes five stands, with the Mechanics, there's six. He's got an Anna, what the heck is this? Anadromakos. Who makes these names? Who, who, who is so Greek to make these names? Tell me, someone tell me. I believe this guy just gives another two... Uh, what is it? Plus two attacks to the command stand, and on top of that, when they get drawn from the Sushi Sack, I believe they give Flurry. Yeah, here we go. So, plus two attacks to the command, the activation Sushi Sack, Flurry. Uh, including any auxiliary and characters. Oh, that's pretty good. Does it give Flurry? Oh, so it just gives Flurry to everybody. So that's really good. Uh... I forget how much that is. I want to say it's like 20, 25 maybe points. I don't think it's a 15 point upgrade, but it's a little expensive, but it's also pretty good if you can get it off. Giving the light unit scoring is pretty good. The only problem with this is that the mechanist is speed five compared to the rest of the regiment being speed six. So that kind of really sucks, but he can give a torque to make them heavy to continue to score. And then I believe one of these Iron Stride or Clockwork Paradise. It's fun. But... For your spells. There we go. Uh, try and strike. Standard. There's Turk. Oh, is this alphabetical? I love this. 
Nope, hindering terrain. I'm gonna just do this. Clockwork Parade, is that the one? No, that's the speed buff of plus five. Yeah, so there we go. Clockwork Parade is a speed plus plus five. So these guys can charge pretty far. So they're gonna be speed five. So they got a guaranteed 10, what's really nice. So you don't have to roll for it. Um, however, knowing that, you kind of keep yourself at that six inch or like 10.1. Same thing with the Ogmas and the Polomark unit we'll talk about when we get there. You kind of keep them at 11.1. So if they want to use their long threat range guarantee, they're still out. And so they have to roll for it. And then rolling for a six is just kind of bad, even if you have a reroll in some way, shape, or form. But overall, I don't mind it. Hopefully, uh, movement on characters goes away at some point. That's kind of been hinted at or talked about. So we'll just have to wait for that. But next regiment, we got a Promethean. This is the medium hammer boy. I was really surprised that he was cleaved too, to be honest. Uh, 10 attacks. It's not a ton, to be honest. It's not the same amount as a regular regiment. So he's not really going to kill stuff. He can kind of get in there and do some damage. He's a great finisher, especially him coming on turn two. And then he can score and do stuff like that. He's also a bit annoying to kill because he's hard in one on defense three with a resolve four. But besides that, um, his spells, tempered resolve, I believe his reroll six is on resolve and defense rolls uh, within a bubble of him after he gets his magic off. And then clench blades is plus one clash within a bubble. So they're not bad. I don't know. I just, I'm not a huge fan of this giant. I believe the Hepestian, as you can see over here, is kind of better even if he is a heavy. But his problem is that he's still 10 attacks. Even if he is cleave 3, uh, he is going to do damage with those 10 attacks, but it's not enough to really push you over and start really hurting regiments. Because you are class 3, you're going up to 4. Let's say you get 6 of them, your opponent takes 6 cleave 3s on an MSU. Okay, you've killed half of it. Uh, yeah, it's like, all right, cool. I got two stands left. I'll just hit back and then have something else. You can st get stuck in combat. So they don't clear off. They're kind of like second and third wave regiments that want to hit stuff in the side after your things have been engaged by your front line. But they'll still do good work. Hepestine for sure will still do more work than the Promethean. I like the Hepestian more just because of his Trine Strike and Crucible Fire abilities. That Trine Strike will do more damage just because it's just damage whenever you get it off. But it's just their low attack amount kind of is what kind of makes them suffer. But besides that, their stat line is pretty good. 16 wounds. They die at the same rate. So if you can kill one, you can kill the other. Uh, then we got Polomark Warlord. He's got the Army of Lions. So plus one clash of the regiment he's in. Um... Pulling from the Street Street Jacks does stuff <laughs> off the top of my head. Can't remember what it all does. Let's see here. Uh, he's current attached. He gives plus one. Sweet. In addition, they gain Tenacious. Always considered to be active. Sweet. So keeps his Ogmas around a little longer. Him being speed six is sweet. Uh, Alantian Spear, I believe, gives him another attack. And we'll find it in here. Where are you? Uh, plus one attack. And cleave one. Sweet. Good job. And what else we got here? Oh, and then we got the Arstria. Arstria, that's the same thing that Clockwork Parade does. Within eight, you, I believe the draw event on the character, you give a regiment within eight, march plus five for their charge distance. So, Ogmas, you're going 11. Burakides with the Mechanist, you're going 10. So just stay at that 0.1 past their march plus five. You counter this, light them up, Make them come into you, make them march charge you, make them lose their clash, you know, do stuff like that. So we got a five block of Ogma. Uh, fluid formation, even on both these guys, is really good. Ogma are a little better because they're mediums with cleave one, so they're going to be doing some good damage there. They got five attacks, clash three, going up like plus one to four, rerolling sixes. So pull mark and Ogma, he's going to do some real damage. The only issue I have with Ogma and Thorakides is the defense two with a shield. Um, they're wound four, and then they're both. Well, one's Resolve 2 and the other one's Resolve 3. So they're kind of like Men at Arms stat line. And MMO, Men at Arms don't live. They just get shot up and die or they get into a fight and die. Uh, the Ogmar are a little more offensively tuned with their higher clash and attacks and cleave. But they still die at the same rate as Men at Arms. The only thing going with them, because they have the pole mark in there and the size of the unit, is they are going to be higher Resolve. But however, you're still Defense 2 with the shield. So if you get flanked, you get a little cleave in there. 
they're just dying faster. That's that's kind of my issue. Like they're not Ogma and Torquides are not anvils. They are um, scalpels or hammer type regiments. So that's the job they want to be in. They don't want to be in an anvil type situation. If you do have to pick, make one an anvil, make it the Thorakides because they don't have cleave and they have less attacks and less clash. Um, make the Ogma your hammer. Then we got two Minotaur Hephaestians, Vanguard boys. These guys kind of just shoot up the table, get on some zones. Uh, their six wounds make them stick around a lot longer than they were at five. So they're kind of beefy with that. They got some low defense on defense two of the shield. You can usually get a little bit of cleave or AP in there and then they start falling apart. But their wounds keep them alive a little longer. Uh, something holding them back is their clash at four, or sorry, not their clash, their four attacks um, with cleave one. It'll do some work, but it's not gonna like end the world. They're kind of gonna get into combat, do a bunch of damage, get hit back, do a bunch of damage, kill the thing, and then move forward. So they're not gonna just blow up a regiment or anything, but they are gonna do some work. They're a great flanker. They're a great uh, line setter. They're a great reinforcement of your lines because of their vanguard. They just shoot at the table and get into position for next turn to charge and kill something. They're also and they're great for just sitting on uh, zones and capturing zones early on. But you kind of want something to take over that role for them so they can move around. I really like Minotaur Hapestians or Haspis. <laughs> Always get that wrong. And I just think they're a great unit. Uh, already talked about the Hepastian, he's fine. Uh, lastly, we got the Apocos and his four companion Cav. He's running Blades of Icarus, or as everyone knows it, as the lightsaber, because it's going to decrease his attack by one, but give him Cleave four. I think it might even also... No, I think it's Clash four base. Might even increase his Clash. Where's Blades? Uh, oh, it does give him plus one Clash. Look at that. Sweet. So anyway, this thing just kind of kills anything it hits. A Clash four, inspiring to reroll sixes. You're, uh, you're fine. You're, you're gonna do plenty of work with this thing. Get your five attacks in, blow some people up. Uh, this is something I really want to spend tokens on to reduce. Because the rest of the companion cab, it's just six of clacks on Clash 3. You know, you're inspiring up to four. You're gonna get a bunch of hits that way. Uh, they have two impacts each, which is not a whole lot. I don't really see that as a ton. But the great thing about them is that they are March 8th. So they're very flexible. You can get into fights with your other regiments, and then you could have the companion cad come in from the side, long bomb charge in, get that plus five march from the Mechanus spell or the Polymark draw event, and they're going, what, 13 inches? So just set yourself up so that whatever regiment you want to fight is within 13 after they hit the lines, and then just get in there, get into the side charge, do a bunch of damage, get that Apachos doing a ton of work. You'll be doing well. So this is kind of, this is going to be your, uh, this is going to be a hammer. Once they get engaged though, they are defense two with evasion one. So they're going to fall apart really quick. They are going to be pretty high on that resolve at three in the size of the unit. But once you break them or start dropping that unit back down to three, they'll fall apart pretty quick. But at four wounds, they, they die. Um, they die faster than household knights, but they have more offensive capability than household knights. So. There's my opponent's list. I'm going to slow roll the rules, pause the video and read anything you want, or rebuild the list yourself. Fine, fine by me. Alright, let's get into the game. Here's the scenario we're playing today. We got Bulwark, so we got two zones and we got three objectives. So we've got this neutral objective, then we got a friendly objective, and then we got... Oh, sorry. This is the friendly. I'll be red. Friendly objective, enemy objective. And that's what we're going to be fighting over. So, you get three VPs for killing an enemy objective marker. You gain three for killing the center objective marker, what's neutral. So you can move through it, you can shoot through it. Um, once it gets engaged though, it becomes a blocker. And you can't land on it. You get two VPs for seizing a zone. You gain one VP if you're seizing two or more. And you gain two for killing the warlord. Then we got the gimmick. What is on turns three, five, seven, nine. The left zone is going to score two additional points, and on 2, 4, 6, 8, the right zone is going to score two additional points. Game last the time. So, in this scenario, you kind of have two ways to play for it. In red, uh, we'll do it in red, and then I'll just undo it all. So, let's clear that up. Uh, your first one is you establish a line right here. You attack the neutral objective to eventually break it. You sit on your zone to score it, 
and then your opponent kind of hits you and you push them off and then at some point later in the game you go and take over their zone that's that's one way to play this the other way to play this is you i'm gonna use it from the blue side you establish yourself aggressively attacking your opponent zone you take their objective and you take this your opponent zone and then you will take the neutral objective and you'll kind of fight them and kind of push them off and then you um go over here and score your own zone at some point maybe you send up something fast like minotaur hepestians or whatever to score that and you're being really aggressive on the scoring at that point the only issue with this strategy is is that your opponent's objective marker you can't score that zone until it's gone and you need to have the proper tools to take it out quickly before your opponent can establish a counter threat and a line uh, use line a little better there we go to push you off and to control their zone because if you get pushed off here they're going to be scoring their zone you haven't scored anything and they're going to be looking to take over the neutral objective and kill it and then kind of push so there's kind of the two the two thoughts. I've played it both ways before. I believe I played 100k into Dweg Home on TTS against uh, Judge Rolo. And I played it the way where I was aggressive towards his zone and scored the objective marker and took it over. And in this way, I played it defensively where I wanted to protect mine, just score my zone easy, take over the neutral and just kind of push my opponent off and just kind of stay up on points that way. So there's, you know, there's two ways to think about it. I feel if you're playing maybe a slower army, it's easier to defend your zone because your opponent has to put work into your objective. What's in the middle of the table. So you have time to kind of get up there and start blasting them and killing them as they try to attack your objective to try and kill it early what can then cascade into a win because they've taken hits while they're not hitting you back because they're focused on the objective and even if your objective dies they don't take over the zone and you've killed regiments what puts you up on cards what puts you up on positioning what puts you up on board control but if your opponent is quick enough to get in there and kill that objective and set up that line so this will be like for faster factions or faster lists looking at like nords or Wadroon or 100k cav you're going to be in a spot where you now have to make a decision. Do you want to go for their objective in their zone to counter them because they have a bunch of forces on your side? Or do you want to kind of keep pushing into them, kill off their stuff, and then try and swing the score around at the end? There's, there's the ups and downs. There's kind of the ways I see it played or played out. Let's go to the table. Here's the table today. So we got my objective, we got the neutral objective, and we got my opponent's objective. We have two big things of Wada. We don't got a mat today. We're playing on uh, in the imaginary space of a billion battlefields in our mind's eye. We got, we're gonna say these are size three obstructions here around these rocks. And then we got some hindering, obscuring terrain. So, very asymmetrical table. What's fine. Be, like, I don't mind it. Um, no matter what side I, I was going to be on, I'm going to be looking for, um, as playing a Dwight Home Castle, I'm going to be looking for anything that is obscuring. I want to sit my Drakes in there. I want to shoot out of it. Because, like, once you get the Drakes in there, you don't have to worry about the half shots passing through it. You can start just doing full shots. It being a toe on the zone also good you can't cover the middle on the zones but you can put terrain on the edges so and also there's an objective there so that's fine uh the water and the forest being relevant so that they kind of block up the middle a little bit so if there's shots coming in you can hide from either side and then cross when necessary the obstruction splitting the table a little bit so that there is i'm gonna do it in purple like you have to pick do you want to take over this or do you want to, I'll do it in, I don't know, do in this color. Do you want to take over that? You know, it's up to you. You kind of pick that fight. You get a little bit of change if you want to come up this way and make a play that way. But you're going to be not as supported by your army, depending on how the opponent interacts with you and the obstruction. So there's a little bit of play there. Figure out what's going on. 
Uh, in this scenario, I'm going to be really honest, I seeing that uh, forest off the bat, I just go for it. I go and control my own zone and look at the neutral objective and try to set up a line. I'll do it in red or black right here. Lock that down, take over two thirds of the board and then go from there. Off the table, that's what I'm seeing. So let's go to turn one. Here's turn one. I auto bring on my Ballista, who are already running up the table. They're looking to get into the woods here. Set that line because I'm thinking of already bringing my drakes in behind them, and that'll be good. I then also get the roll off for both my flame berserkers. I'm looking for one to move up and get into the zone to maybe early score it if I get a good roll on turn two to maybe bring in the Argent Kilowa and the Warden Block so I can cast the score spell on them. Get in that zone and start scoring it early. And then my other flame berserks. I am planning to get up here, kind of set myself up either behind this objective or like, eh, we'll use orange, covering this right side or, you know, whatever I needs to be done to kind of cover that center, but still be close enough to the drakes, be close enough to the objective because I want to move up my ballista. If my opponent's not kind of coming forward, I can shoot the objective and start putting work on it and I can clear it out later when, with the flame berserks because if you're going to commit a melee regiment, you want to have that objective dead in one turn. You don't want to be trapped on that objective for multiple turns. So bringing guns is good. You just walk up, shoot at it, work on it. And then either for the last point, you kill it with melee thing or last point, you kill it with another range thing you have just sitting there working on it. My opponent gets his mechanist and his Thorakides. He decides he's going to make a play for my zone. I'm like, all right, sure. I'm fine with that. You're going to have to kill my objective. It's a little hard to see in the lighting, but I'll circle it in red there. So he's going to have to kill that. I'm already setting up to counter that with my fortress being set up roughly where this black line is. So he's going to have a tough time because he's got to get through that objective. Then he's got to get through the rest of my walls. Then he's got to get through the drakes and whatever else I'm going to support. I'm not worried about his zone just yet because if I can kind of just kill all his stuff on the left side, I'll control that side of the table and I can swing over at my leisure. And I'm planning to take the neutral objective and score my zone, so I'll be up on points. So let's go to turn two. Here's turn two. For the dice roll, I get both my drakes. Yay! My opponent brings on his Polomark and Ogmas and his Apokchos and his companion Kev. All right. So first things first, get the ballista. I just run them up 10, inch, 10 inches up the table. I am setting up that line. Uh, flame Berserks setting up to counter the polo mark. I don't activate my Flame Berserks first. I then go with both my Drakes who are auto already looking to get into good places. I just shoot them up 14. My opponent's not being that aggressive. He knows the threat of my guns and he doesn't want to just lose stuff and die. So that's smart on him. I then have both my drakes go. I'm doing an orange, you know, cast some hindering terrain. Uh, I get two tokens. I don't erupt my the forest nearby to just light up all those ballista. Not a smart plan. <laughs> so I just don't cast the third spell. After that, my opponent's, you know, he's done some characters. Ran up his companion cap on this flank. He is kind of dirtling a little bit with his... Thorkiti unit, he gets within his, I, I think it's like 10 inches of this ejector marker. It's fair, he's already looking to get the uh, Clockwork Parade spell off. But another thing he does is he also doubles up on this with the Polomark, he gets within 8 here. So that his, uh, what is it, Aristra draw event can happen and also get on that unit in case he fails his... Uh, what is it? Clockwork Parade. So he can guarantee it no matter what. What's smart, like that. But also another thing he can do, I'll do it in purple, is he can cast Clockwork Parade on to the Companion Cav. So they get 8 plus 5 to, what is that, 13 inches. So knowing that, I move these Flame Berserks up. I'm like 13.1 away, so he's got to roll a 6, so he can't get to me with his plus 5. But I'm also within, I'm going to delete that, I'm going to do, I'll do it over here, so there's the 13, but I'm also within 7 right here, so when my opponent finally decides to commit to my objective, I have Flame Berserkers who can run over there and do a bunch of damage. So 
that's the plan there. And then on top of that, in orange, uh, Drake is within eight inches, so I can provide tokens to them. I'm already starting to generate tokens, but I want to keep the Flame Berserker safe because I will want to spend tokens because they're going to take a lot of hits early on. So already looking at that interaction as it's coming down the table. Uh, the middle of the table is really not developed a whole ton. I'm just, he's just got some Ogmas kind of ripping down. He's going to be fighting off Flame Berserk, Ballista, Helbringer Drake. I'm not worried, so there's just kind of sit around and wait. I'm eyeballing this objective right now to kill it, because I'm now finally established myself in my position where my castle wants to be. So I'm looking to deal with that. Overall, no one scores, but gains have been made, positioning is made. Let's go to turn three and see how things turn out. Here's turn three. My opponent gets his... Hepestian. Uh, Promethean. Minotaur Haspis. There, I'm doing it finally. I myself get... Wardens. Wardens Archkila. Fireforge. So, things that go on first. I have my Ballista go. They shoot the Polamark from super far away. They were the 18, so I just take aim and shoot. Pop a couple caps. Sweet. Uh, Polamark... He activates, he gets his plus eight on the, uh, what is it? What are these called? Thorkides? You know, he just bounces that over here. I'll just draw him in purple. So you got your Thorkides, I'll put a T there. Boop. And then we got the Polamark with the Ogmas, I'll just put an A here. So he just puts his Arista onto the Thorkides. They kind of dirtle around, I'm like, that's fine. I move up one of my Drakes. I'm not looking to spend any tokens right away. I just pop shots, get on the zone, looking to score that. Pop shots into the Thorkides. My opponent, I believe tries, but fails to cast the heavy thing onto his regiment. So he's taking like a stand worth of damage because it just throws some random shots at him. They're on twos, I'm not super worried. But he either makes them heavy or he doesn't. I kind of forget, but it doesn't really matter. He's got three stands left, I have three stands, so no one's gonna score that this turn. Next thing what happens is my opponent runs up his Ogma. He can't get to me, like he can't get to my Ballista, but he's just running up to position and he's looking to use the neutral objective as a way to, to defend himself. But we check with a proxy and I can just swing at a 90 degree to touch his corner on a 90 degree flip. And I'll do it in orange. So they're going to swing this way to touch. And then they're going to close this way and in. So we figure that out after he's placed himself there. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I start I start doing some easy stuff, you know. Like Flame Berserks haven't gone yet. They're kind of at the bottom of my stack. But, I, you know, I bring on my Wardens who then cast a spell into my Flame Berserk so they can score... I believe I fail it, so they don't score this turn. <laughs> what is I'm not like an issue, it's just, you know, it happens. I would have scored, but now I can't. Like, whatever, I'll deal with it later. I bring on my other Wardens. My opponent brings up his Haspis. He's looking to get into this zone. I'm also looking to get into the zone. So now we have this face off between the two. He puts himself in the forest with Smart. I got a lot of guns coming up. Fireforge coming up the table to fill in the slot of the Flame Berserk. He drops his Has... Or, uh, sorry, not his Haspis. His Apestian, as you can see where it is. Uh, dude in purple. He drops that guy there. So now Fireforge countering them. That's fine. I want that shot. I believe he's like Harden 1 or Harden 2, so I'm not going to get a ton of AP through to him, but just Weight of Fire will bring him down eventually, and that's also fine with me. Um, I finally commit these Flame Berserks who are covered in stuff. They do a bunch of damage. Uh, my Drake just shoots at them, so I get him down to like one wound after everything's said and done. A ton of work there. I have my... Ooh, what is it? I believe I get some Pyroclasts off from either the terrain, because it's erupting due to the Ballista in it with the Magma, or as you can see, I'll do it in orange. Um, there's the template where I just drop right on top. 
So at some point my opponent, oh yeah, no, I dropped the template, I dropped some Pyroclasts into them, and then I forget why the second Drake dropped a Hindering, I totally forget what the heck he was doing. Whatever, so I do some damage that way, but then eventually he charges the objective, passes through the Hindering, doesn't get his impact attacks, does, I believe, two points of damage, because maybe he did get them heavy. I feel like he did. I know he got them heavy once, so I think they're heavy. But so, but we're still no one scoring, because I got five stands to his three, and he has three to my three. I think that was what was going on. He did make them heavy. But then he has plus two from the scoring, so we're still five to five, so it doesn't even matter. So no one's scoring this. And before the left side flame berserks go, he just reforms his companion cav because he realizes if they ever come in, they're just going to die at this point and he wants a better charge, but I don't blame him. And I get my charge in with my flame berserks, do a bunch of damage, and get him down to three stands. Um, I think they're broken. Oh, you know what? They're totally broken. But still five contesting stands. Yeah, so there's the broken token. We'll just circle them blue. There it is. Boop. So they're broken right now. So that's not super great for him. And then his other Ogma units down to one wound and broken. So that's not super great for him. So I'm feeling like a pretty good spot right now. And generating more tokens. I haven't spent anything. I'm a little worried about the Companion Cat and Lightsaber. They're going to do a ton of damage. But if I can stop them I, and get them stuck, I can light them up and kill them. The Promethean and the Hepestian are coming up as a second wave. What's fine. I don't know what his Mentor Haspis are going to be doing on the right. If they're going to sit on the zone and score it. Or if he's going to try and get into me a bit more. But right now, no one's scoring anything still. I'm still doing damage and working on his stuff. I'm kind of saving my overcharge tokens on my drakes for when they're going to matter for a bunch of shots. So with that, let's get into turn four. Here's turn four. So, good things that happen. I believe I have my Ballista go. Actually, I think my Flame Berserks go. So, Flame Berserks. Do, 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 here and then we'll just draw an objective here and then we're gonna draw my opponent's mechanists and stuff here so I believe my opponent wins the roll off uh, one of his stands the mentor Thyrian in here kills the objective because I'm pretty sure he got the torque off for the heavy regiment so he did two damage last time so he's gonna score that the rest of his stands deal some wounds to my Flame Berserks, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, then my Flame Berserks go kill off this stand, this regiment. I'm like, sweet. He then has his companion cav go, who are way back here. They charge in, kill a stand off with impacts, uh, what reduces their frontage. And then I use, I burn a bunch of tokens who get rid of his lightsaber attacks and then he like does another two stand or two points of damage i'm like whatever i got two stands to your five i then come on and i shoot with my drake i believe i throw some power class at him i think i drop some hindering terrain at some point and do a bit more damage um from both the wizards on drakes after that his polemark and his ogma go they're engaged with these flame berserks. They take Aura of Death 6. They only got one wound and they die. Polmark does some damage back. Whatever. We were looking at this before the game started. If the... Um, this guy. The... Uh, not Haspis. The Hepestian can get in. And we found that because of the weird charge angle. He would hit his regiment first when he made the wheel. And he couldn't wheel back. So he wouldn't. But now the regiment's dead. He runs up his other unit of Haspis, but it's not a bad play here. He needs to reinforce that side what he's been fighting. Um, I'm looking at it, I'm a little worried. I want to get the Flame Berserks in, but they're my last card of my deck. After that, I don't know. I think these like Fire Forge go, they kind of pop on and shoot some stuff. Like I kill off his, um, oh, whatever. I think, I think these Ballistae shoot a Companion Cav as well. And then this Drake shoots at objective, and my opponent's just kind of dirtling around with some stuff. He puts his Haspis here on the right. Uh, they, I'm gonna do it in purple, should have been over a bit just touching the zone. That is a terrible line, good job. They should have been touching the zone at least with one stand to score it, get some points. They still could have been in the woods that way, and then they could have shot out later. He's looking to try and get into these Fire Forge, because you know the Fire Forge are gonna do some ton of work into that Hepestian. 
and he needs to kind of keep it safe, but he has really nothing around it except for those Haspis. I, in retaliation, set up so that I'm either going to charge the objective, get, or I'm going to try and find a way to charge onto the Haspis to stop them. Maybe I'll reform charge. I don't know. Maybe I'll go into a two block. But I'm really kind of pinned there between that and the objective. He can, I think he can swing in an angle, pass through the objective and hit me if he wants. So, you know, he's playing counterplay. Um, after the companion cav die, the Promethean, as you can see, I'll do it in purple as well, charges into my flame berserks, kills them all. I've decided I'm not gonna spend any more tokens. Fireforge come onto the table, pop some shots into them. Wardens just run up to cover the Fireforge, but also threaten the Promethean if he wants to try and get into anything else. So if he wants to get into my Hellbringer Drake, you know, the, the Wardens are hopefully going to charge him and get him. But I just drop him right in front. Now there's three stands to three stands on the objective, and last orientation died, so my opponent is going to score that objective. I'm going to do it in this purple, so good job on my opponent. Talked about the Pestine who killed my Flame Berserks. He just comes in from the side. Now that his Ogma unit's dead, kills my Flame Berserks, just does a ton of damage. I'm like, okay, whatever. In response, I just run up the Fire Forge just to be within uh, seven of the objective. And then kind of, that's about it. They're just seven within the objective and then, you know, they're just going to shoot out from there. But they're going to be within range to hit that Pestine no matter where he goes. So right now, my opponent's scoring two points. Got the objective for five. Uh, I've killed his Warlords, I'm on two, my opponent hasn't killed mine, so... Right now, I'll, I'm not looking to score, I'm just looking to kill all his stuff. Because he's just kind of in my face, and I can just pick up the rest of the scoring in the later rounds. If my opponent doesn't kill the neutral objective, there's six points, and I can sit on both zones and then alternate between the two. I think this is the turn where it alternates to the left side so my opponent gets his additional two points, so I think he's up to seven. So he's uh, starting to run away a little bit, but I'm just not worried just because there's four regiments left. And I still have the rest of my lifts except for the two fire uh, flame berserks. And he's kind of just set up any way, which way he hits me. I'm just going to have follow up and just kind of whittle his stuff down and kill it. So let's go to turn five. Here's turn five. Uh, I forget who wins the roll off, but I'll talk about this first thing. Uh, we're going to draw a box right here. This is the Promethean. But I know the Wardens get in. Do a bunch of damage to the Promethean. Promethean counterattacks, I believe, kills off a stand of Wardens. We're trying to spell each other. Um, I think we're both uh, not very successful. He doesn't get his spell cast off, or he does. I don't really get my spell cast off, or I do. I give it, like, minus one resolve. I think we might both get it off. I'm not really sure. It doesn't matter too much. Then we got some follow-up. You know, Fireforge shoot at it. Hellbringer Drake shoots at it. Does a bunch of work that way. Eventually kill it. In response, my opponent charges in with the Minotaur, Aspis. I have think I've tried to cast some spells. I think I only get one out of the two Pyro class off. Not the end of the world. I drop some Hindering at some point. Um, I burn some tokens, reduce some damage. Now we got Minotaur Hespians within the Wardens who are fine. So we got two stands so we got two opponent stands versus my three monster stands and my other stand i think there's at least not exactly sure if the the character is on the zone doesn't really matter though because the monster's three plus the other guy is going to be four to his two so i'm going to be scoring that left zone i'm happy cool we're good my opponent apestian who is over here charges into the balliste he goes through the hindering uh doesn't really do any impacts. He doesn't do vet roll very well for his cleave attacks. I let them all through, and then I think I just spend tokens to do the resolve. And he doesn't kill off a stand, or he kills off a stand, and there's some wounds on the other one. Don't really matter to me. He gets shot, and I try and cast on him, but it doesn't... He's still alive, and I think I had my casting before this Drake goes, so... He eventually gets down to, like, one wound, and I just end up, like, shooting him in the face, and he dies. Uh, oh, yeah, and these Fireforge shot off and did a bunch of damage. I remember that one. Uh, I'm pretty sure these Bliss were also might have just shot off and did a bunch of damage before he got to activate, but that's fine. You know, doing the things first, so, like, Wardens went in, Promethean, then the Hapes or Haspis, or Ballista, then the Haspis, you know, back and forth, and then Fireforge go in. 
Then my opponent decides with this uh, Haspis unit to charge in, tie up the Fire Forge. I'm not worried, they can just sit there. I counter. I charge in with the Warden, start doing some work on that objective, get on that zone. I'm not going to score it anytime soon, but that's their whole job for the rest of the game. Kill that objective, so that zone. And the two Giants are dead. Haspis are stuck with two walls. I can split my forces in half and kill those ha Haspis and score and win the game. So let's go to turn six and see if those Haspis live. Here's turn six. My opponent, I believe, wins the roll off, does some damage to the Wardens. Wardens fight back, do some damage to the Haspis, and then the rest of it happens. You know, Fireforge, um, Bliss Day, kill them off. Sweet. You know, Wardens, kill it, secure that. Um, then we get the. Haspis who attack the Fire Forge, kill off a stand, that's fine. Drake rotates, pops uh, all his tokens, everything, even on twos, does a ton of damage. Fire Forge, I don't even know if they fight back, they might have. And then I pop some magic into them, killing them off. And then at that point, I just move and rotate this Drake to look at this objective. Wardens fighting on this objective. And my opponent has nothing left. I score these two points, I'm going to take everything else and score it out by 10, and I think at this point I already have enough points to win, but we count up to 10 and let's go to the score. So here's the score, I get 34 points, my opponent gets 7, and we counted it up to turn 10. So overall, a really good game, kind of focuses and shows off the strength of Magma and the Dwaygon Castle and where to, refor or re where to reinforce yourself. There we go, let's there. Articulate some words. Um, I like having a Warden unit or a Fireforge unit come on last to try and re either reinforce or if the lines have already been drawn and there's a hole somewhere that I can take advantage of, like that Warden unit on the right side who started to go towards my opponent's objective. That's fine. Um, I like the Fireforge coming up the flanks behind the Flame Berserks because the Flame Berserks are going to die. They don't have the durability. Like, yeah, they're five wounds, resolve five, defense three. But they're going to be eating your opponent's army, just, just right, like, they got to eat it, and they're going to die before they, I don't want to say do some serious work, but they're kind of acting more as a wall, and the Fire Forge kind of come up later as a stronger wall, and hopefully the Flame Berserks are within eight, they're taking damage, but they're holding on, the Resolve 5 kind of keeps them going a lot of time, but once they get hit by heavies and stuff, they just fall apart and die, as you saw from the Aspis who came in. Did a bunch of impact attacks, did a bunch of straight damage on his cleaves, and just kind of blew him up. I think he even tried and strike them and killed them, or something like that. Um, on the left side, I don't think my opponent should have gone for my objective until he, until he cleared me off. He should have contested that zone with stuff, but I think he should have been making more of a play towards my Ballista and Drakes. Start to engage those guns, shut them down. He had the tools to go for it, but I think he needed to wait one more turn and just march charge in, potentially, and then set up the Giants right behind as far forward as they can go, set up the Companion Cab behind as far forward as they go, and sacrifice both the Ogma and the Thorakides, and then follow up with the Giants and the Companion Cab while having your third line be a Haspis who can kind of shoot up and score stuff and reinforce where needed. So he needs to really kind of make a spearhead push. He spread himself out too much and kind of got locked. I don't want to say locked down, but when he just kind of double marched forward and I got my flame berserks on those Ogma and just did a ton of damage to them, I'm like, okay, well, these things are dead. I don't have to do any work. Um, he just didn't have enough in his center to reinforce it. And so his center fell apart. I was locking his left side down and slowly killing it because he kind of got set up into a meat grinder because I just had stuff layered. So like after the Flame Berserks died, there's Wardens. And after the Wardens, there's Fire Forge. And after the Fire Forge, or there's a Drake. Like you got to pick and choose your battles. And I just had stuff lined up that anything coming in there is just going to get hit by multiple things. Like Drakes are shooting, Ballista are shooting, Fire Forge is shooting, Flame Berserkers and Wardens are taking the blunt of his attacks but they're going to hold on because they're close enough for tokens because I'm looking for that positioning. So Dwayne Home is a lot of small adjustments to push that little bit of edge forward, and it feels like a big thing for your opponent, but for the Dwayne Home player, it's like, 
If you are actually slightly out of that 8 inches, it feels massive just losing a regiment and not spending tokens. So you really gotta play that tight castle, and that's this is where it's coming from. This is you gotta really look at those distances of K. Okay, this regiment is going to charge seven inches forward, hit my opponent who's obviously going to, for my objective because they position themselves to be that way. Am I still within eight inches of the of touching a stand? Yes. Hey, okay, good. No. Do I need to do this? Can I set up elsewhere? Can I just use the objective as a shield? You know, start looking at those things. Overall, good game. I had a good time. Hope my opponent had a good time. Uh, we shook hands, kind of talked about some stuff after the game, kind of improve them. Uh, one of the things we talked about is on the right side with the Haspis, who were there all by the Lonesome. They should have been in that zone, even if they were... And in the woods, because initially he, he didn't position his Haspis in the woods. They had like two stands out. So I got him to like shove his Haspis over into the woods. And then as he kind of marched and wheeled to threat project out of the zone, he didn't have a stand on the zone and he should have. He should have moved over to at least get a stand on there to kind of keep scoring, keep those points up because you got to score to win the game. So if you like the bow report, there's a bonk table discord you can join there's more videos on youtube i'm assuming you're watching this on youtube because i think it's the only place i upload these and i hope you guys all have a great day bye